<laughs> so we, when everything is rolling, we're off to a great start here. Hell yeah. Episode 76 of From Everyone. I'm here with Kevin Stevens, my man. What an entrance. Just a whole fucking just Noah's Ark. Party. It has been a beautiful day. And then the Kevin texts me and says, I'm here. And outside was not somewhere that I always Dude, wanted to be. I was, I got into Meriden and I was like, I looked up. It was just all gray. I'm like, okay, maybe this is just Meriden. <laughs> It's, it's just, just typical like, Meriden shit. It's just a fog over the, the entire town. township. But no, like right when I got in, I got I hit that road like sure. right in, and it just came down. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck!" I was like, "I'm sure Peter Scott is like whole like clothes all set while this shit." But luckily, we're all good. no worries at all. No, I'm not really <laughs> I'm a clothes guy, so I'm more than happy to go into outfit B because they're all all mix and match of athletic shorts and band shirts. So hard to go wrong these days. That's fair. That's fair. Hell yes. Uh, Kevin Stevens is here. Uh, before we get into the show, just my quick little plug is that I have a music video coming out Thursday. So I guess today, a couple days after we're recording this, and a couple days. Uh, when this comes out, it'll be out for a couple days by now. So videos Sick. coming out for No Eye Scene and Chain Twist, uh, and then one more for Within the Ruins that I did VFX for under Chris Clump. Oh, shit. Um, so good things happening all around. Yes, go watch the music videos. Let me know if you're interested in more music videos. Uh, Kevin Stevens is here talking about pixel art. No, My man. This is the Peter Podcast. I'm just going to ask you Shout everything out. that's happened in the past <laughs> four years. There's a lot to talk about. It has been, I'm grateful for how crazy it has been, but it has certainly been wild. Uh, and every every week I'm down here going, oh, fuck, I forgot that little detail. Yeah, something will come up as we're talk, talking. He's like, golly. Um, it's been great. It has been great to watch yours grow as well. Uh, so pixel art is everywhere. It is video games, character art, environments, items. Uh, yes. Squares. Squares. Uh, where can people find you online? Where can they reach out and check out your work? Yeah, so uh, pretty much all my work is on. I typically have Instagram as my main area where I post <laughs> things up, and it kind of all just trickles out from there. But Beautiful. it's uh, pixelkeeper underscore ks uh, is the kind of the tag for everything. So feel free to if you wanted to see like I, I do any animation. Some I did a you know we're gonna talk about it a little bit, but I did some like <laughs> music video. Yep. Um, I do a couple games too. That I'm Dungeons and Dragons on. cards I saw. Yeah, it's a couple of lols, a couple of magic cards. Hell yeah! My money dump of the year is, <laughs> is all just magic now. But I got kind of bullied into that. But yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> bullied see. into playing magic. Usually you're bullied out of playing just a little magic. Bit. Yeah, a couple people that are bad actors in my life. I'm just kidding. No, it's all good. <laughs> hey, that's the worst they do. That's the worst bridge they make you jump off of. And <laughs> yeah, you'll be up. very okay. <laughs> um, hell yeah, dude! I want to dive in. Yeah, right with the uh, Infernal Panther music videos for I Am. Uh, I have been laughing at this idea of that like. Well, I'm doing a music video. I feel like I started with photo, which to me is creating a frame. And then I got into video, which is like combining frames. And now I'm like animating 3D Unreal Engine stuff, which is like, yeah, designing the environment, combining it all. And it always numbs my mind of like, okay, I started with one frame. And now my job is to make 4,000 frames. And your job went from making one pixel or, you know, an 8 by 8 10 by 10 thing to making, yeah, not just frames, but all the pixels that compose the frames. And it just seems like an insane scale of what I'm doing. And I'm so <laughs> just fascinated by it. Dude, I was straight up. Like, I, that's the number one thing I want to do with pixel art is like, I'm going to make a fucking music video. Hell like, yes. I retired from music, but I'm coming <laughs> back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a music video. I'm going to somehow like kind of intermingle with Hell all yes. that and like. That'd be cool, and I'll just keep doing those. Yep. And <clears throat> I always wait at the opportunity. I had a couple of things that popped up here and there. They didn't end up like exactly working out to you know like where we like started the project and we're starting to execute. And always everything. how it goes. Yeah, but, lots of rumblings and very few things make it from rumblings to the actualized yeah, state of yeah. And it was just like I wanted to do it. I always had the idea of doing it. I didn't know what I wanted to do it or what band or anything. I'm like you know maybe I do it with like boundaries or something. I have like a little fan like like an FMV fan oh, yes. like like animation loop or something yep. like that. But I was like no, it's gonna happen. I want to do a music video like. I don't know what the fuck I'm dealing with here, but it's going to happen. Yep. I can put the fucking squares on the, <laughs> on the just <laughs> I can put those out digitally. So let's do it. Yep. And then I kind of just kept doing what I was doing and then seeing what like opportunity popped up. And then that's how kind of the Infernal Panther thing popped up. Hell yes. Um, we toured with I am when I was in boundaries. Oh, God. I don't remember any dates to anything <laughs> ever. At some point in time before 2020. Dude, straight up. Last night I was like, fuck, what year did me a Peter come with us on that and this, that? I'm like, oh shit, dude. Is this the guy who shows up with no research? You're like, fuck, kidding me? Um, no, but we ended up, I think it was like maybe a year or two ago, I would say. Uh, uh, I am came over to the Webster. They played a show. Andrew gets off the stage, all fucking sweaty, their vocalist. <laughs> um, and at that time, we, we did the previous tour with them, so we mm -hmm. all kind of knew each other. And uh, I think I was with like Wayne, 
I think Wayne Hunter, pretty much every other, crew. every other yes. guest you've had on <laughs> yes. this podcast yes. was all eating like vegan pasta in the back or some shit. <laughs> Tracks. And, vegan. and there's coffee somewhere for yeah. sure. Straight up gets off the set. He's like sweating. And I'm like, like he's walking this way. I'm like, bro, like go to the green room or something. Yeah. Like towel off or something. And he just starts like hurling over here. And Andrew's kind of like a bill fucking dude. And I'm okay. just like, dude, they like, did some something going on? What's happening? It comes over, he's like, hey, brother. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. As I'm like, got like fucking vegan chicken parm in my <laughs> face, like, everything good, man. Good set. He's like, you want to do a fucking music video? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, is this really what's fucking going down right now? So he brought the whole idea. It was like, I, I never asked him. But he was like had this whole thing like he was just sleeping on it. So the whole like treatment. So I love that it's like a, a linear. Uh, sorry, two like miscellaneous podcast things. Uh, your audio is here, and the armrests are adjustable if you would like to oh, adjust cool. them. Um, okay. Two random things that I like to mention before, and I forgot to. And as you were talking, I was like, <laughs> "Fuck!" Cool. So my little interjection there. The um, table. I love the storyline of the video. Where I think my big challenge with music videos is like uh, I can make something that exciting for thirty seconds. I'm positive of that. But a music video hopefully gets your attention for four minutes and a performance doesn't always keep us engaged for that amount of time. And so it's always tricky to me of like, yeah, what am I doing? How am I adding new and interesting ideas to this thing as it evolves to keep people engaged? And I thought mm -hmm. the linear storyline there was such a perfect thing of like, we've seen so many like actor storylines that I think border on cheesy and I always struggle with them of like, we've seen so many breakups in music videos of like the girlfriend storming out the door and dropping the necklace and like all these, yeah. these cliches that we see all the time. And it's like, those are just not exciting to me. And I feel like the strategy you guys brought in, or the strategy that sounds like I am brought to you, uh, was so smart to like bring in this linear thing that is engaging. It makes you want to see where the thing's going. And like I, my, my guess from the start was like, I think we have a happy ending to the story. Like, I think we're going to beat the guy at the <laughs> yeah. end. But still, it's fun to watch it unfold and like see it all happen. It's like it was very well, honestly, Andrew had the whole thing like lined up to a T. Interesting. There was some, you know, there was he had the he had the beats there. Mm -hmm. And I was in my head, I'm like, it very, I try to like get it back to the retro style mm -hmm. with a lot of that stuff. It's like, all right, in the 90s or the 80s, like when the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles go through like Shredder's Revenge or some mm -hmm. shit like that, I was like, they're definitely beating Shredder at the <laughs> end. <and laughs> they have they're going to yes. win. Yes. Like, I couldn't do something where it's like, and they lost. And it's like, it just felt real weird <laughs> to the theme of like being retro because it was sure. always like campy and shit at the time yeah. with like arcades and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It'd be kind uh, of funny, though. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm not going to make this some, like, emotional fucking <laughs> thing. Killing the band at the end luckily, of the video. Yeah, but luckily the first thing Andrew brought up is like, brother, I want fucking, I want a panther in the in the album cover. Because at the time for that, for Eternal Steel there, it was like, panther, chick with a sword, just like, mm -hmm. I'm chilling. Why the fuck is this panther with three heads just <laughs> over there? I don't give a fuck. It's heavy as shit. It looks cool as fuck. <laughs> yep. And I was like, all right, fucking fine. He literally told me, like, have the panther, animate the panther, have her running through and just killing everyone. I'm like, all right, sounds good to me. Like, <laughs> we can figure that out. And I was like, this has got to be a side scroll beat em up. So, mm -hmm. so in my head, I kind of, like, think of, okay, let's just start with, it. let's let's do it as if I was making a game out of it. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do is we're just going to make it a cutscene style Yes. of you know, of a game. If you were to like look on like IGN or you went on like YouTube and you're looking at like, here's the essay history of blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Here's all of game. And you saw those like scenes oh, and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. That's exactly like pretty much how I thought of it. 10 best games of the 2000s. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It. Uh, yes. So I was like, let me keep it at that scope. Let me see what I can do. I'll make a couple scenes. I'll make the opening. Like, let me get, let me get the fucking first sentence down of this thing. Yes. So I got the logo, showed it to him, and he was like, hell yeah, let's do the rest of it. The loading so. screen is always like, yeah, I'm in. Once I see the loading screen, I'm already invested. Oh, dude, I was shit in my pants dealing with that loading screen. <laughs> I was like, it was the first one. So, like, it, I'm not, the scale ha isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. I have the beats, but I'm like, how many scenes am I going to need? You know what? Oh, like, yes. Let's start doing this. I don't know how long this is like. In reality, in my head, I'm like, it's probably going to be like half a year to knock this out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, loading screen. I spend like, like a two weeks on this thing and i'm like okay you need to like start moving so i sent it over the guys are stoked on it i was like all right sweet we're like we're moving along here and then the kind of like the rest just started treading out but it was now i'll be honest with you as much as like the beats were there i was so new it was such a learning experience yes, i yeah. thought in my head like i had the idea but to like actually execute it uh, i was like oh 
I am shit. so grateful to hear you say that because that is every music video I've ever done to me. Of like, we come up with this great treatment and it's great. And then you get to the set, you get to the edit and you go, oh, fuck. There is, yeah, a hundred things I didn't <laughs> think about in this puzzle. And it's just because the puzzle is so big and complicated that like even in the context of the side score, like you have the heroes, you have the beat, but then it's like, well, how long does this fight take? Yeah. Do we have ups and downs? Do they attack back? Is it all smooth? Like there's, yeah, in my animation thing, it's the same of like, there's so many intermediate steps between these big beats that are almost incalculable. Like, I don't know how... There's no way. I don't know how I would plan better. Like, to some degree, you just kind of have to get in the mud and make it happen. Dude, you have... Like, honestly, my number one thing when it's whenever it was, like, music or whatever is just start it. Yes. Like, just get it started. It's all going to come there. Yep. And when it comes to, like, projects and stuff, if you've had the time and you have the idea of, like, I want to do this, yeah. just go for it. Yep. Like, it's the same way... If you're in a local band, you're like 16, just starting. Like, dude, just play it. Like, eventually, you're gonna have some talent shows where you <laughs> you're gonna suck ass at it. Yes, but it's all good if you're having fun. Like, eventually, you'll get to the point. Maybe it's five years. Maybe it's yeah. ten years where like you're gonna you're gonna be fine. This is gonna be second nature to you. Mm -hmm. So, kind of, I just went in with that. I was like, you know what? Yes. I'm gonna knock out the first thing. We'll figure it out. I have the time, and we'll just kind of go from there. But there was definitely some panic. 90% of the time with it, mm -hmm. but it all ended up working That's out. It keeps us alive. There's a, <laughs> yeah, a Teddy Roosevelt quote called the man in the arena. And it's this whole like passage. I assume he gave it in some speech. I don't know exactly what the context yeah. is, but the, the line that always sticks in or one of the lines that always sticks with me is that there is no effort without, uh, without shortcomings, without mm -hmm. errors and shortcomings. Uh, and it's that same thing of like, you have to start. And the only way to get to where you want to go is to go through this process of just being bad yeah. and just suffering a lot pain dude. because that is the only way to get to where you want to go is the shortcomings and errors. That is, that is the road to success. That is the road <laughs> to getting what you want done. And it's frustrating. And I spent, uh, I made 12, 15 hours this week trying to make clouds in a video of like, I just, we had this like hellscape that we were building and I just couldn't figure out how to make like the billowing clouds of smoke. And I spent so much time just, and it's like in the context of the music video, no one cares about that. That's not a God. detail that anyone else is going to care about. But it ruined my week. <laughs> what do you what do you usually use for your, like doing all that rendering? Is it through Premiere or do you like go into Blender uh, or anything like that? Premiere, After Effects, Blender, and Unreal. Uh, so Premiere, I do like the the oh. arranging of the video. Uh, After Effects is like the keying, so it's getting rid of the green screen and converting them to like uh, just a person over to nothing. Yeah. Uh, Blender, I tend to do, like make modeling, so I just made uh, the No Eyes Seen video for Moonglade. Uh, there's like a structure in it that I built, and so it's like a landscape that's an Unreal. But then for like the specific things that I want to make, I still make them in Blender because my brain hasn't fully made the jump into Unreal creatively. So at the moment, yeah. it's yeah a long chain of four softwares, and that's the other part that I'm always struggling with of like, what do I do here? When do I make the jump to the next one? How much do I leave open to be done? And how much do I just like yeah finalize it and move on? Like yeah. the the work order there is always a nightmare. Yeah, how do I get the file to translate to the next one and then <laughs> the next one provided by the next one? And also could assume that when I send it to the band, they're going to want a revision. So how do I leave this whole process reverse engineerable so that when they say, oh, actually, square one, you should have done this instead. It's like, okay, I don't have to go to square one. I can just, yeah, figure <laughs> out how to like leave a back door open for myself. Uh, and that's the part that gets a little complicated. But I like problem solving. I think it's a fulfilling thing. I don't know. Somehow that to me is a very satisfying thing of like just, yeah, I don't know exactly what I'm making. But I know if I put enough time in, I will make it. Yeah, it's going to add. <laughs> it's just a matter of, yeah, doing it and then trying to do it in a learn how to do it smarter and smarter as I go along. So that when someone asks for a revision, it's not like a, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I could be like, cool, I got it. A bunch of my a bunch of my friends do like Warhammer painting and mm -hmm. stuff. That's like the, that's their whole thing. They have like their own podcast, do all this X, Y, and Z. But they, like, that is one thing. They'll always, whenever they do painting or whatever for those figures, they're like, listen, man, there's always going to be an ugly phase and you're <laughs> going to fucking hate it. But mm -hmm. just, just keep going. We fucking throw some more paint on it. I'm like, all right, dude, sounds <laughs> yes. good. And I always hit the ugly phase. I'll tell them, like, guys, we're at the shit phase right now. Peep it. And they're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, is the I know. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. The only thing you do is laugh at it sometimes. And uh, uh, I guess I haven't been able to talk about it for a while, but I now can talk about it. There's chain twist videos coming out this week. Uh, the the concept of it is, or one of the concepts in it is that there's like hanging tube lights. So the tube lights that we all see that are not dissimilar to these. Yeah. And they're hanging and like swaying and blowing in the wind. So it's like a way to, yeah, they're all moving, they're flashing, it looks cool. I tried to demo it down here and the ceiling like wasn't high enough to get like the tubes off the ground. So what I ended up sending them is just like a bunch of tubes laying on the ground around me, me and my electronic drum set in the middle of it being like, guys, this is gonna be a music video. And this the photo it. of it is like, 
like embarrassing. Like <laughs> it was one of those like, please trust me. I know this doesn't look like what you want it to look like, but I know it's going to. But it was yeah, that ugly beginning of like. Yeah, it's enough for me to know that like this is possible, but not enough for anyone else to have any faith in. <laughs> and yeah, seeing through those moments sometimes is tough. And Dude. I can imagine in the context of a first music video and doing it for a band like I am, where like I I had the benefit of most of my first music videos were not for signed bands. They were not for touring bands. They were for local bands with much more modest audiences. And someone like I am, where it seems like a, a huge scale to then be in that oh fuck moment and go like oh, people are actually going to see this. Yeah. Like, there's like a double whammy happening I had here. that like 20 times pop up. I'm like, I like get like a, I was like, all right, I'm going to have her swing a sword. And I'll do the animation. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is good enough. I was like, motherfucker, this is going on the management YouTube. Like, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let me add a few more frames yes. and shit like that. Like, it's always, it, it, that was, if there was everything, you know, I wouldn't go back to it, but definitely sure. like, there's definitely fundamentals to like, not to animation, but to, I guess, if you're thinking of game sense, like, okay, here's your move right, here's your move left, mm-hmm. here's your up and down, here's your attack, here's your jump, or, like, your dodge or deflect, sure. stuff like that. Those, like, funnels I knew of, I seen them forever, but I'm like, all right, time to put them in. Like, I was like, why did I put them in practice <laughs> on the first music video I'm ever doing, you dumbass? <laughs> yes. And, uh, it was literally that all the time, but... I ended up, it was like the best learning experience ever. Yeah. And it ended up, I feel like, turned out, I felt pretty happy with 100%. it as well. I, yes, cool. it turned out incredible. Yes. One. No, <laughs> just Not that I'm the arbiter of all things good and bad, but no, in my humble opinion. Actually, yeah. you know, honestly, I got to give it to like the, a lot of the boundaries guys. We're pretty much in like one Discord together. Hell so, yes. like, I would get a scene. I'm like, all right, here's the title. Mm-hmm. And everyone would be like, fix that, fix that, fix that. But a lot of times I'm like, would you guys put this in like your video? A lot of that shit. And they're like, okay, you know, like, I don't know if we do that. Like, that mm-hmm. might seem a little silly or whatever. And, sure. you know, a lot of those guys definitely help. Like, definitely peer review has been a, a really important thing to me. Yeah. It's it's honestly, if I, like, made a game and gave you the game, like, hey, can you let me know if this game sucks? Mm-hmm. This is, like, just a couple steps back where I'm, yeah. like, yeah, would you, you know, either A, would you play this as a game? Or B, would you like it as a music video? Yes. And so I got to get a lot of checks from folks on that too i, I didn't uh, i didn't have like an nda or anything like that please i am don't take me out <laughs> don't kill me if you do it's sorry. no longer in fact so we're good we shit it it's all been over a couple now. years i didn't sign nothing what kidding. is the or how did that compare to like video games you made in the past whereas i was looking at it it seemed yeah that a music video is an enormous thing but of course i'm super biased into thinking there a lot i assume that a music video in the context of making a video game is a very small and modest project where it Yeah, has there been other video games that you made in the past that, like, made this a logical step? Or was this the first, like, big thing that you took on? So I have been working on a game for a couple years. But this is the thing. It's It depends on what you're scope-wise, what you're doing. So for the game I've been working on, um, I only do the art for it. Gotcha. But, like, there's a couple things where I have to make sure, like, the... They have a physics engine that they run everything Mm -hmm. through, so it's making sure all of it's pieced together correctly and nothing's, like, colliding in a weird way. Gotcha. Um, I I wouldn't have to handle the physics engine. It would just go to them, and they would process the engine. It's a lot of just measurement stuff, really. Yeah. So I could sit there and kind of let the freak flag fly and just kind of do what I can. They're like, this is dope. And then we could just move from there. Whereas uh, there's some products where I'm doing the animation on, and I literally have to sit there and go, okay, so, if, you know, in a video sense, and please fucking <laughs> just correct me if I'm just talking out of my ass at please. this. I'm sure you're going to crush it, but I have to, I'll like, it. destroy me, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to, I'll have to look at the screen resolution. It's not like 1920 by 1080. It's like 108 <laughs> that would be such by, a like, it is crunched down. And I have to go, yeah. okay, is the character going to be tall enough? To make sure, like, when oh, I jump over this, stuff. yeah, and if they like kneel down to jump, is it gonna make sense, or does it look like they got fucking super moon boots and on? And with whatever? 108 pixels, I'm assuming it's also like if they're seven pixels tall, the kneeling is like, well, are they kneel to five? Do they kneel to four pixels? Like, Dude. what is? Yeah, that's a weird extrapolation of math you have to do. Of like, how does this gonna look once it's scaled up? Straight yeah. up, I have to have a program that goes, okay, so if I'm at 1920 by 1080, crush it down for me. So I can, uh, whatever resolution I can do without X, Y, and Z happening. Mm-hmm. Another thing, too, as far as scope goes, shout out to Hunter. That was on your podcast. Yes, I guess. King and Hunter. I think yeah. episode 73, 74. Yeah. yeah, go watch Hunter. Yeah, Hunter is, 
so for that video, all the actual movement of things coming across the screen. So the animations of someone just like mm -hmm. running or swinging a sword or, you know, or the, the, you know, doing an attack or whatever. I yeah. did those, but Hunter had to go through, I think mainly in premiere, he did do all that and then have it move across and connect the scenes together. So interesting. He is. Yeah. He's absolutely the secret weapon when it came to like getting everything lined up. Otherwise, I guess the best way to put it is the picture book where you like mm -hmm. the best way for animation when you're flipping through those frames, I would have to make the entire scene work as they're running across, then transition to the next one, then transition to it. Whereas a lot better workflow to have Hunter go and say, okay, I'm doing this one scene. I'm going to have you move them across this way for X amount of frames and do mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So save my ass. Hell yeah. Because I, that was where the, the kind of, there was a wall of scope that kind of hit me where yeah. I went, Oh, I got to have everything move and then transition to the next thing. And the next thing I was mm -hmm. like, no, I'm getting Hunter. <laughs> like he was like, yeah, I got you. I'm on board. So shout out to him. Hell and yes. there was actually, I, I do have to give my flowers to everyone that worked on it. Please, there was, please, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, from it. My, uh, my girlfriend's sister, Anita, she's like an insane artist. Yeah, I think her a a U E X M A R R I is her tag. Perfect. Uh, she does a couple little collabs with me for as far as art goes for when I'm doing those conventions and such. Um, but she did a lot of the uh, a lot of the background work too that you see on it. So shout out to her. They're like for a project like that, like it was a learning experience. Half, maybe like a halfway through it, I'm like, in order to like wrap this thing up, like I'm gonna have to bring in some mm -hmm. bring in some folks. So yes. it all worked out. <laughs> some fresh eyes and fresh brains. Yeah, yes. for sure. Like it was. In my head, I wanted to like throw it in a game engine and be like, I'm mm -hmm. gonna play through this, I'm gonna record it, and mm -hmm. then we're just gonna do that. It's all good. Yeah. And I was like, if that just became so out of like we gotta run it back, I gotta mm -hmm. do a different thing. So yes. There was always something that popped up. There's some like You started this by saying you thought it was gonna take six months. Do you have any sense of how much time it took when it was all said and done? <sighs> trying to think. It's your best guess, maybe. I'm gonna say it's like six, seven months. Damn, okay. Good there was for a you. couple I would say, I mean, there was definitely in the next round of it, there was definitely a way to do it faster. Yeah. Now that the flow's there, but it was the first time I was figuring the flow out for it. Yeah. And that was the scary part. Yes. Once we had it, like, but then, like, I would say the first, you know, two, two and a half, where like things were moving and I had my pieces in place to be like, okay, we need this, we need this, we need this. Mm -hmm. Then it was fine. I could probably crunch it down to four months, but it's still insane. Yeah. Yeah, one month was me just in a fetal position. Like, <laughs> fuck, how am I going to do this? Why did I sign in this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? <laughs> the first month and then half of each of the first following months. I guess yeah. Andrew in the back of my head like, hell yeah, brother, get it done, brother. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, no. Damn. What but, is your workflow like for this? Like, are you starting on paper? Is it all digital? You know, I, there's some pixel artists that'll do paper. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll put it out. Um, I went through kind of like a notes method where... I would note every scene out, kind of like a script, mm -hmm. but there was obviously no words to anything. There's some text here sure. and there, but I would say, you know, intro, spaceship, crash down. Like it was, mm -hmm. it was like some real cave enough shit. for your brain to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me fire sticks <laughs> to get yeah, like that yes. shit. So there was there was a lot of that that was happening. Um, very one notish, and then I would sketch it out. I would use kind of like wireframes. So like okay, for uh, for the warrior, that's like kind of the key term they would always use for um when we were pitching it mm -hmm. it would just be kind of like a stick honestly like a stick figure if you looked at like e-bombs world or new grounds like mm -hmm. those old stick figure animation oh, things yeah. where yeah. they're all fighting it was very much that i was like okay the run animation is going to be this and then you'd kind of just like build around that for your animations okay um but i would start with like getting getting my action figures set up mm -hmm. and getting them moving and then from there, I would go back to my notes and go, okay, so I got my action figures. How am I going to play with the action figures? Is like the best way to put mm -hmm. it. Yep. <clears throat> and that's where I started like realizing, okay, well, now we got a story. So I know this is like a retro kind of thing, mm -hmm. but like Golden Axe stuff, but like, how are we going to, like, I have to make this make some sort of sense. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles don't go <laughs> in the fucking sewer. And then they're like, in another country, like and shaking the president five <laughs> seconds later, and like, what the fuck is going on? Like, if you put a bomb on that music video, I would have yeah, turned some heads. I still yeah. gotta make the Amazon fucking like you gotta, the warrior come like come through and like get from point A to B. Yes. That was where like it really kicked in. But 
it was all like a lot of the stuff is all like just like kids with action figures. That's the best way I put mm -hmm. it. Like I always like I I always have loved like Dungeons and Dragons and making um just making like stories and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it all that all worked out for me. Yeah. But it was really like getting into the why for a lot of the stuff on like a mm -hmm. very much like, hey, a warrior is gonna be coming through with a three headed panther just killing just baddies yeah <laughs> you just whittle at that and try to make it somewhat meaningful yes. on your first time ever doing this yes. i was just like all right this is a little much but like i said it, it, it like all that kind of cloud goes away and then you get your frame of everything mm -hmm. and you get your storyboard and it was good but i like the the analogy they were playing with action figures as a kid because i like the the youthful energy that it like alludes to and i feel like that's how i still like i still call my cameras my toys like yeah. all my lights are still my toys and i understand that they are far more expensive than the toys i had as a kid and more powerful but like it still is the same part of my brain of like yeah when i'm going to shoot a music video i'm just going to hang out with my friends and play action figures again and yeah. like there's a lot more <laughs> happening you have to build an arena for the action figures <laughs> instead of buying one at target but like it's the same mentality i think that gets me going yeah it's like, I mean, that's honestly, I started doing that in the, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I was like, everything's miserable. I'm like, yeah. you know what? Like we're everyone that ever, all my friends and stuff have all played games. That's how we got through stuff. That's mm -hmm. how like we all like hung out together. Like, do I, I barely ever see the guys. Cause they either like, well, you know, they're on the road and stuff, but also like, we're all just sitting in discord, just fucking <laughs> playing games. That's like, yeah the friend love language, I guess. <laughs> sure. I don't know what to tell you. But um, it's always been like that. Like, and take, doing pixel art has been, is really something like brought me back to like childhood stuff where mm -hmm. it's just like, I can be creative and I can make goofy stuff and make my friends laugh. Yeah. Like, I've I, as a as a bit, I'll literally start drawing something. I'm like, let me throw a cigarette, have him smoke, and just like send it to the guys and make them giggle and shit. So it's just like, yes, it's so stupid. But um, I get the the way I would equal it out is if like when I was back in doing the band stuff later on, it was very much like not that wasn't fun, but it's like you get in the business of it, yeah. and it kind of takes away a lot of that. So Whereas anyway. when I kind of kick back and started doing pixel art in the pandemic, it took me back to that like local band mm -hmm. or like waterfront tavern level where we're just like the glory days. Yeah. Yeah. Like straight up, like that's Saturday night. We're going to drive the mass to that. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yes, it, it was very like, everyone's having fun on stage. Oh, someone's fucking guitar broke. Ah, not a big deal. It's like, everyone's having a good time, whatever. So kind of brings me back to that where I can just like, not, it's not as rigid. Yes. So I saw you use the phrase and I wrote it down here to make sure that I got it accurate, uh, that you were demaking modern video games. Yeah. Uh, and I like that as like a, again, it's, it's like to me like the same like childhood thing of like, I just want to know how this thing works. Like you were taking the cool thing and being like, well, what is my version of this cool thing? And I, yeah, yeah I like the ownership of it. I like the personal touch of it. And I think it's a, yeah, I, I hope, I wish that all art could stay in that bracket because you're right. It does yeah. have to become business and serious and work at a certain point. Yeah. And as I'm, yeah, I'm self-employed. I, my whole life is with this camera. And so I always try and keep that in mind of like, if this becomes a nine to five, this becomes the things that we dread about a nine to five. Maybe it's a better way to put that because certainly nine to fives work for some people and can be great. But in my context, not the right fit for me. And when it ever becomes that, it starts to feel like that. It's like, I'm fucking up. Something is yeah. wrong in the process, in the way that I'm doing the workload I'm taking on. Like something has to change here. Yeah. Uh, and I really try to keep that in mind. Of, like this isn't worth doing if it's not enjoyable. No, like, it's got to be. If the first question anytime I get a commission or anything, yeah. it's like, is this going to be fun? Can yep. I do some silly shit with this? Mm -hmm. Or like, can I make this as like beast as possible? Yeah. Like the I am stuff. I was like, I can make this pretty dope, I think. Yep. But, you know, all the mechanics come along <laughs> after that. But I'm like, that that's always the first question I always have. Like, yep. is it gonna be fun? Or when it was music, like, are people gonna like fucking go off to you know this part or that part mm -hmm. or whatever? It's always been like that. So Hell I yeah. try to stick with that. Yes, uh, we started with the music Sorry, video dude. part, and which is of course yeah, yeah, ten steps down the road of what you actually do. So yeah. pixel art started much more on a smaller scale. Where did it start? What was like the first pixel art you made? Where I I've seen the prints online. Like I assume it started with more like one by one square image or whatever. Yeah, ten eighty. 100 by 100 square, whatever the fuck the dimensions Yeah, so it's like mid-pandemic. The glory days. <laughs> the glory days, yeah. I was maybe a year after being out of, uh, after leaving Boundaries, mm -hmm. and I was like, it was like right when pandemic hit, like they had their last show. And yeah. Like, I was like, you know, I got to do like something. Like, and I've been playing games all my life, and I love retro games. 
But I was like, how the fuck do any of these people like do this mm -hmm. now? Where back in the day, it was like people are like sitting there on a Dude. press board, like putting X, Y, and Z for, for all the hard work. That I think I yeah. did that. I put that in quotes because like I'm aware that I'm yeah playing games with my friends to some extent. But like doing this now is cool. The idea of people doing this in the 60s and 70s is like. What the fuck? How did you do anything yeah. with that technology? Like, yeah. I'm so full of shit. Well, like, I don't even know how you guys did this <laughs> Yes, back then. Yeah. I have no idea. But I was like, yeah, how do they do it? And yeah. I would just watch, like, old videos like Sonic and shit like that, looking at the art of it. And I started, like, taking a further look now. We had all that free time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. There's literally, like, a $20 program I use for 90%. Maybe what program is it? It's called Ace Sprite. You okay. can get on Steam for like twenty bucks. Very cool. Okay. Straight up. And I was like, oh, you could do this for twenty bucks. I was like worth an afternoon. What at am least? I? I'm yeah. losing twenty bucks. Well, like, all right, let's do it. So yeah. I got into it. I start off with like make Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, all right, I can do that. And then from there, it just kind of like you start off with a very small grid, exactly what you're saying. It's like those um oh God, what was in like the the 2000s it was like those press on beads that everyone used to get uh, yep. and then you'd iron them yeah and it's literally that yep. the whole thing is that yeah um yeah i would start with like a really small board of that and then kind of just expand 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 and then eventually you'd get into like the i guess the realm of larger pixel art is when you hit like 200 pixels gotcha like right about there really depends on the style like it becomes a style choice after that some like purists are like, it's got to be 64 by 64, stuff like that. And I'm just like, chill the fuck out. Sure, let's make it HD. Let's chill go 200. Fuck out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like people break that rule all the time. But it, yeah, it just started. You really start small. Like we have kids that come to the booth um, when we do like some of the convention stuff. And they're like, how do you do any of this? I'm like, I'm like, dude, it's take like four squares like cut out four squares, put them on a table, and rearrange them whatever way you want. Yep. Like that's literally all I'm doing. But just keep adding more mm -hmm. squares and give yourself more space to do it. I always find myself using the paper analogy of like uh, when I'm explaining rendering. It's like I am laminating this. Yeah. I am taking this this collage that I made of all these pieces of paper that are scotch taped and kind of there, and I'm making sure that they're here yeah. forever. That's and then the band's <laughs> like, I don't know if I like that. Can you, can you cut that laminate out and then swap that around and then yes. relaminate? Oh wait, here's the third one. Relaminate that shit one, three more yes. times. <laughs> always the fun part. Uh, but I don't know. I think I yeah. I don't know if I would enjoy it as much if there wasn't the client on the other end of it. Where I think part of what i enjoy is doing the art but i enjoy that i am fulfilling someone's vision like it's very satisfying to me to like yeah. take your idea and make it hopefully better than you ever thought of it yeah so i i as much as i like to dread about we all dread revisions and complain about them and they are a I, nuisance and a pain in the ass but like i think without that part i would be very like yeah unfulfilled in what i'm doing like there's some uh, there's revisions are a weird thing to me because like when i don't get revisions i'm almost like nothing no like, i need it's I need, perfect <laughs> i don't think that's I need affirmation yeah like, yes brother this is sick i need that or if you give me nothing i'm like so yes but even like a this is sick sometimes almost feels hollow to me maybe that's my own cynicism my own anxiety my own inner shit but yeah. it's like i almost feel better when you go hey i like everything my hair at this part isn't right and that tells me like you missed a lot of stuff that i worked hard on but you did watch it critically and go what could be better here and that yeah. tells me like that's enough of a pat on the back to me of like you got all the way through and all you could find was that your hair was messed up like Cool. I cool. did my job great. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas when I get like a awesome, it's perfect. It's like, no, it's not. I don't believe perfect. I don't believe anything is perfect <laughs> and done and final. Like, give me something to yeah. tell me that you have some investment here. <laughs> I need one negative comment. Please. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just straight up. That's yeah. uh, would happen to me, like, too, for um, some of the commissions I would get. Like, if I got, to, I've had a couple of folks where I had, like, okay, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Yep. I send something, it comes back, kicks back, and I'm like, at this point, there's sometimes where it's either like I want a couple things and I'm yeah. like, yes, or it's like I need 40 different things. I'm like, was I the right guy for the job yes. on this? Which is ha rarely happens, yep. luckily. It's never been ever that point. <laughs> also, just, like, just for context, for anyone listening, if you're if we're working on a project and you send me feedback because you heard me say on the podcast that I want feedback, then don't send that feedback. <laughs> yeah, don't make <laughs> like, me fucking laminate it again. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> nervous now that I said that, that someone's going to message me and be like, well, on the podcast, you said you want feedback. So here's know. 10 things. It's like, no, 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 you misunderstood Well, entirely. my jean was cuffed at minute 40, <laughs> minute 42 of the documentary. Can you cut through? Could we just reshoot? Sex? You would be... Uh, I have to be very vague here, so I don't throw anyone under the bus, but it's not someone I've worked with a ton, so life's easy there. Uh, one time I sent someone a music video, and it was, they were the only subject in the music video, 
Uh, and the feedback I got from them was, hey, can we use less of my face? And it was like, I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't think that's even an option here. Like, you are, this is about you. What else? We've all we filmed with shoulders up. <laughs> How much less of your face can I possibly use? So there are definitely those moments of feedback of like, did you even think about what was going to happen here? Like, I appreciate this, but you think this through, man. No, Come not on, even, man. not even a little bit. Come on, uh, and it sounds, it's the same thing as getting 40 notes of like, uh, I can change some of this, but some of this could have been talked about before we started. And some of this is like, you made your bed, King. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, every time we had one like years ago, there was one time I forget someone in boundaries was like, Pretty much we had, they didn't realize we pressed like, I think one of the like records is all pressed and like out the door in a couple of days straight up like, I got some notes on this. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Excuse me? We went through 74 <laughs> rounds of revisions and now you have notes? It's, I, I, it's on vinyl. <laughs> like, what? I was like, let me get my knife and scratch out all the 132 that are coming through. I was like, what? That's even fuck? better than the laminates. Yeah, getting, getting each vinyl by hand and getting an exacto knife and like cutting a physical hole, which I guess would be possible in theory. Not that Dude. it's practical or realistic, but like in theory, if a vinyl is just cut in like in theory, then I guess you could take an exacto knife and like change the pitch of this note. Dude, post post band, I was like, so how do they make vinyl? Like my <laughs> dumb ass just like. Straight up, like I would never yeah. know the business. I, like I, I mean, for I had an idea of it, but like how they cut that and get that all set, like that is some shit. Yeah, I'll never understand. I don't understand but, how it's still backed up. It seems like there should be a surplus of people who can do this that just aren't doing. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. We hear about this vinyl backup all the time, like a I'm vinyl sure. blacksmith or something. So yeah, it feels like people would have been making them forever, and now they're bringing it back. It's like, hey, just tap your retired uncle on the shoulder and get him back into making vinyls for <laughs> Fucking us. Fucking no. Corey, Corey, and Matt dealt with all that stuff. I was just like, <laughs> smile and wave, smile yes. and wave. So <laughs> every band needs a beautiful person to smile and wave. So. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh god. Um, hell yeah. So it's it starts with like 64 by 64 kind of stuff for yourself. When do commissions start coming in? When does it start becoming like a business more so than just a passion project that oh. you're doing to pass time in the dark ages? Yeah. So I would say maybe a year after. Okay. Um, no worries. It was so before kind of like blast from the past way before, like during band stuff, I was working at Microsoft, not like in like I'm not like Bill Gates's boy or whatever like that, but we were not at, publicly. Um, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all set. No, we. Um, I worked in the Microsoft store in the West Farms Mall uh, over at the. Um, yeah, West Farms Mall. Yeah, what the fuck. <laughs> and um, uh, essentially, I used to do um, it's like game tournaments and stuff like that. One of my friends, Dwayne, and we. Where like we would do conventions around Connecticut, so there was one called Retro World that was like real, like real nearby in Hartford. Okay. And at the time, it was like the first year ever. Like, why? Maybe we like promote the store through doing that. We'll maybe do like a raffle there, or whatever. So I used to do those a lot. Um, that ended up kind of fizzling out over time, and ended up not being at Microsoft anymore. But I was like, hey, it would be pretty cool if maybe I got myself a booth when I was doing this pixel art at that same convention and mm -hmm. see how it is from there. That started happening, and uh, my first year of doing that was abysmal. But I got out there and like started getting the business side of it. Not figured out. I'm still like you know always trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Of course. Um, but like I started, people started asking like what the program is I'm doing. Like how do you do it? And eventually it came to the point where I got my my first commission, which I'm gonna be honest, with you, I'm trying to remember what it even was. I, I know my that, first yeah. print ever, but my commission, I'm trying to remember. Dude. I get asked all the time, yeah, what was the first video I ever got paid for? And it's like, I don't yeah. actually I know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could scroll and find out probably, but even then there's a chance it's gone off the internet yeah, by now. And I can CPA didn't find it. fucking research today. I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> I will forgive you. Just this one time, though. Any other slip-ups, we're going to have an issue. But that one, we'll like no. it. But it was, um, yeah, I just started doing that. And I was like, you know what? My therapist was like, hey, you probably shouldn't commodify this like one thing you got going. And my dumb ass was like, 
<laughs> oh, but money. And yeah. I, I still did it, so I'm sorry, therapist. Yeah. But um, Shout out. They always know best, and it sucks when you have to defy them. It's like, I know that you know best, and I know your advice is the right one here, but I got to go my own way. Yeah, here. straight up. <laughs> yeah. It was like, okay, so like, I kind of like went full tilt with it. Um, I just really did prints for a while, mm-hmm. like just static images. Yep. And because the animation side of the program always scared me to death, and I was just like, okay. Maybe yeah. maybe like year two, I can get someone to like <laughs> wink <laughs> in an animation yeah. or something, yeah. and then it kind of all just spilled out from there. Um, it was all, yeah, a lot of a lot of like prints or a lot of images, a lot of people's birthday parties that they were just like, hey, can I have like one silly thing of this? But a lot of it was was jokes. Like I have I have a little little guy of Nathan, <laughs> where like he all like. To this day, he still doesn't wear a fucking shirt on. Well, he like he, they got like the <laughs> the black on black yeah. button ups. Yeah. But when he's not wearing a shirt, like it's black jeans and just Nathan. Yep. So I was like, all right, I'll make like a little little version of Nathan. I'll get him cheeked up. Like I was just, I dude, I was just, it was stupid shit. I was just yeah. making a consistent <laughs> like, hey guys, look at the group chat real quick. It's just like Nathan, two frames of him like wiggling his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So many shit possible, and that. But honestly, I would pay any amount of money to see that animation. Bro, I would exist somewhere. I, I was just talking with a coworker about like that jib jab mm-hmm. site that was like years ago. I'm like, that shit's so goofy. But like, I was straight doing that. Yeah. Like in our group chat, like this would be funny. This would be f- like it was all stupid. Yeah. But as I was doing it, I was just making little pieces and pieces and pieces, and I'm like, oh, I know how this works, and I know how like. When a when someone jumps, how like all your muscles work mm-hmm. with that, and I'm like it ended up starting like it was little practice rounds for yeah. like the big show, which is probably like the video or the games we're doing and sure. stuff. So it all it naturally worked out. It's the same shit when you're in the band practice room and yeah. everyone just like swaps instruments or like mm-hmm. at, you're at band and you're fucking slapping on the snare drum for you know like just being an <laughs> yes. asshole. It's yes. just like eventually like oh. There's an overall time to it. Oh, let me get my first kit. And yep. then it all just turns out. So yes. it all comes out of fun, yeah. really. Like that's where it comes to. So I would, I would credit to me making stupid shit Hell consistently yes. over becoming somewhat, I guess, professional about it. Yeah. So it all worked out. I, that is the beauty of being self employed or, yeah, having part of your or owning your own business, I guess. Yeah. Whether it is your yeah. entire income or part of it. Yes. It is a beautiful thing to be able to be in control and be in the driver's seat and also be able to, like, fuck around at work and not have your boss yell at you because you are your own boss. So yeah. like, I, I still oh, yeah. to this day will include Easter eggs in most music videos I send out and it never makes it to the final one, but in every draft that goes to the band, there's something in there of like, this can never see the light of day, but you guys are going to love it. I'm going to delete this shit in five seconds, but I'm going to peep it real quick to you. <laughs> <laughs> Always, yes. There's a couple. Uh, there's one I'm thinking about that I will not say into a microphone and I'll happily tell you later. <laughs> um, but I put it in and I'll show my mom the video <laughs> and I forgot the Easter egg was in there. And she goes, Peter, what the fuck? And I was like, no, sorry. That was <laughs> for not your eyes. That was for our eyes only. Oh, bro. There's a, there's a magic card that we have. It's like a staple in the, I guess the best way to put it, it's like a, you have to have this card okay. in your deck in order for things to work out. Yes. It's a meta. And right every, now. Yeah. The meta. Yeah. Everyone's got it. It's yeah. every, it's a staple, I guess mm. the best way to, you know, everyone considers it that, but straight up it's like, it's the, I did like a lightning, it's called lightning greaves, but everyone wears fucking Crocs when we all get together and play. So I was just like, yeah, I'm going to fuck it. I'll make Crocs. But like, Straight up, there is a version where it's just it's dude shorts. I made I made this dude's calves look crazy, <laughs> Jack. I was just sitting on like anatomy YouTube, like how to draw legs, and like took it way too far. Mm-hmm. Like this dude is just like is roided up. But straight up, case in point, I threw a little extra layer, which is just a dick, like coming out of the shorts, <laughs> and that is like the limited edition. Like here you go, guys. Here's yeah, my FD boys. Version. You guys can all bring these out. You got the dick lightning greaves now. So those will be printed in in, uh, in due time there. But I Hell revealed yeah. it to the public. Yeah. There's a dick Your edition out. of the lightning greaves. That's great. So, yeah. It's just <laughs> stupid great. shit. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, my friend Lucian always comes to the conventions all the time. We have a whole bit where he's like, I'm learning pixel art. And it's just him drawing a dick at every convention. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Come on, bro. Stupidest bit. That one friend that you, that you can't bring in public, but you kind of have to because it's so fun to see what happens. Bro, it's, 
Hell yes. Also, like the uh, Microsoft Stop. background for the convention where it gives some context of like how you got into that world because it seems like it would be terrifying to me to walk into a convention and be like, yeah, I belong here. I'm selling my stuff. And it sounds like the Microsoft was a good like test run for you to get in there and be like, okay, this is how it works. This is what a successful convention booth would look like. This is how I can succeed. And yeah, it made it easy for you to hop in in your own way. Yeah, it definitely helped quite a bit. Plus the tournaments we were doing were like, here's 80 feet of space. Because, like, when everyone were like, yeah, we're Microsoft, we just want to play game tournaments, and, like, we want to host one, it's free. Mm -hmm. Microsoft, here you go. And everybody's like, it's Microsoft. So they give us, like, 200 feet of floor. We're like, we didn't really need that, but <laughs> okay. So that sure. was always really daunting. So having, like, a a table this big a or maybe size, larger yeah. to it, I can, like, get it set. But it's very much, like, short stories versus... Big yeah. giant booth where it's yeah. like it'll speak for itself, but like getting the branding right and like figuring out your booth was the scary part. Honestly, the first year was me just like rattling a tin can on the side of my like grid. <laughs> oh, is this like someone buy a print? <laughs> I need to make the table. Like, yes. please. It was a lot of that. So <laughs> it was definitely a little daunting when yep. like you're in the second hour of a convention. You're like, all right. I have to pay for this Red Bull that I bought. <laughs> and I have it, yes. <laughs> yeah, Much now, less the booth I haven't even paid for. The yeah, Red Bull has it. Yeah, it's yeah. a tab of everything. Yep. But that was also the same way anyway music, where like in the rough years, in the beginning yep. years, where you're just like, all right, how many shirts do we sell? Well, we brought 10 of them, so... So we have dude. 11 now. I don't know what Yeah, happened. we got 11. Someone took their shirt off, threw it in there, like <laughs> but it was the merch. I don't know, but it was very like I always had that mentality of like, hey, it's going to be a grind mm -hmm. for it could be up to 5 years, could be up to 3 years, could be up to whatever. Yeah. So, if I've always come with the lowest expectation possible and just work with that, like that's the only way. Yeah. yeah. You my, can't get disappointed if you're already disappointed. <laughs> my version of this was uh, when I'm getting into photo, I'm just giving out business cards aggressively. And I would yeah. give out like thousands. And I would go to like a sold out Palladium and be like, I swear to God, no one is leaving here without one of these cards in their hand. And it's no different than you waving the can of like me being like, I'm doing all this stuff and I can't get a single fucking person to look at it. So how do I get one person to look at this to make the the drive to the Worcester, yeah, the gas, the parking, all that shit. How do I make it at all worthwhile? It's yeah. like... Hopefully, I can make one person come look at this thing, and I might not, and I, I certainly, yeah, came short of that many times, but it's like, yeah, it snowballs. Uh, I also gave myself comfort with the idea of, like, you might not come to my look at my thing now, mm. but if I'm at the Webster every time you're at the Webster, and every time you're at a show, there's some guy coming up to you saying, hey, I took photos here. If you want to see them, this is where they are. Yeah. By the 10th time, you're going to be like, all right, this, what's Fuck. this guy up to? Give it a shot, bro. <laughs> what, what? Yeah. Eventually, you will be crowd surfing and be like, maybe he got the crowd surfing. And I think the convention is a similar thing. Of like, Even if the first one you don't sell out, it doesn't sound like you did sell out everything, but you're hoping to build that momentum of like, if I can sell one thing this year, the next time I come back, Eventually, this brand gets recognition. It becomes, yeah, recognizable. And then someone can buy a print where even if they're not doing it right now, if I just shake this can enough times, Dude, someone will walk by. Shake the, the right can, person. have Nathan Wiggles' butt on two <laughs> frames and just, like, post it. And hopefully people laugh. Like, I don't know. It's just like. We need three frames of butt. Three frames. Before yeah. I it. yeah. That boy's cheeked up. <laughs> tight. That boy got motion. <laughs> <laughs> fuck i am saying <laughs> i love every second of it i i, I hope he hears then, it and admires uh, all the motion <laughs> um no but like straight up it was uh i i guess i was i guess i always bring it back to music because that's it's where if i i don't think if i had that or had that like mindset mm -hmm. i'm gonna sound like one of those like sigma grind set like podcasters from yeah. <laughs> Like I wake up at four every morning and do X, Y, and Z, sure. and then I, I use my blue light to fucking <laughs> yes, ice bath, sauna, the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make my X, Y, and Z grounding. Up, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, yeah. all the fun stuff. So like that stuff, but we had to. I would say with the band, we had to like, not like it's gonna sound so bleak, but for years it was like hopefully five people will show up, hopefully mm -hmm. ten people will show up. We're like, I'll be glad if five people show up. I'll be glad if ten people show up. Yeah. And then it, like over the years, cast like you know builds and builds and builds yep. i was always going to just like okay this is just something for me and then hey this is something for maybe a couple people to laugh at and then hey once you it was like the same exact mindset <laughs> with it so like it's even like to this day with job interviews i know people are like you gotta you gotta add a music like 
you must have partied a lot. And I'm like, dude, we all just played our Nintendo Switches. Also, none of us drank. None yeah. of us smoked either. And they're like, did you even play music? Like, shit like that. It was, but it was always like, hey, this whole thing was built off of, it had to be like z- ground zero, and it had to get built one by one by one. Yes. And it was never, it was never like promised that it was going to blow up, but whatever you got, you were grateful for. Yeah. So I just kept it with that mindset. I yeah. I love that. Obviously, my camera was the same mindset, and the podcast was yeah. a similar thing. Of like, I knew episode one wasn't gonna <laughs> change my life. Like, I it's I still the first know. One. I've it's heard your, you're learning. Yeah, I've heard people say that. Yeah, get to a hundred episodes of a podcast, and then you have a podcast. And I like that idea of like the first hundred are just practice. And this is me figuring out how the fuck do I do this? How do I schedule people? How do I make it easy to make this happen? What does a set sound like? I don't know audio at all. How do I record sound and figure out all this shit and microphones and like yeah. Uh, I come back to this idea all the time uh, of my dad. Uh, my dad always, uh, long story short, he was a teacher. And so I would always come home from school being like, yo, math is stupid. Why do I need to learn how to read and write? Like, this is all dumb stuff. And he would go, well, once you learn this thing, you can learn anything. And I always hated it because it was such a cop-out answer of like why I needed calculus is to learn how to learn. Mm-hmm. But I think he was right. And I think as I learned the camera stuff in the podcast, it was like, oh, yeah, now that I've gotten the camera off the ground, it feels plausible to imagine getting other things off the ground. It sounds like the band was the similar thing to get the, the pixel art off the ground as well. Yeah. Um, I heard Brian Garris talking about this in the context of like, yeah, hardcore kids run the world. Like there is just something in our music world that requires such a grind and such a dedication and such so much eating of shit that is so different than other music industries and other artistic industries. And maybe that's not totally true, but it feels true. And maybe I'm just biased because I'm in the world. Oh, we're certified shit eaters. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole Licensed, world is that. Laminated. Yes. In the little holder on the wall. Yes. Shit eater. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a rough time <laughs> <laughs> yes uh and but i think that pays dividends where like he was saying how like the amount of managers and stage managers yeah. and uh, pr people and like the amount of successful people you meet that came from this thing is like oh yeah there is something here there is something yeah. that makes us successful at the webster underground at the vfws at the waterfront that does translate and yep. not everyone <laughs> fits that bill there are plenty of bands who don't find success or people who don't find success but like there is something of like it is such a a grimy slow burn that yeah. it's like if if you don't have that that ethic, that work ethic, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, yeah, that is the the key part of our industry. I mean, you know, like even for like outside f- like friends and stuff, or like people when I was really young, we were doing music, mm-hmm. were like doing like they were grinding too, and then seeing them now, where it's like. Mo, Mike Yeager's and overdoing the Lorna Shore thing. That was a whole fucking bit for a long time. He was like, mm-hmm. I'm to the basis of Lorna Shore. And then it happened. I was like, oh, you're still running that fucking bit. And he's like, no, it's 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 happening. I was yep. like, oh. Yeah. It's like shit like that. But he, like, there's an old, there's a, there's a, a picture I always come back to. Um, I think it was a bunch of us at the Voltage Lounge. It's like, lounge. It's like Austin Evans. Uh, Jeff, some blood bather, uh, like even Zadak too, is doing his own like clothing, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like everyone together, one group photo. And I was like kind of thinking about where everyone went, but all of them are in that same shit eating certification where like all these dudes grind mm-hmm. the fuck out. Yes. And I mean, Jeff, I, if I remember right, it's been years since I really talked to him, but I think he's been doing really well booking down in Florida, mm-hmm. like running shows, um, like obviously Moak, Austin's got Orthodox. Yeah. Like it's, I don't know, it's pretty cool to see every, like yeah. I'm really happy to see everyone else like thriving. Yeah. Cause I knew for a fact that all those dudes were all busting their ass like religiously. Mm-hmm. And that's just like all they knew. Yes. It was just like, we got music and we're just going to crank through X, Y, and Z. It's the same way with you too. Like when you started the podcast, I was like, Oh shit, this is so fucking cool. Cute dude, little to do this, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, this is perfect. Like, and it looks nice too. Like on the, on day one, <laughs> I was Thank like, you. Oh shit. Thank you. So it's like stuff like that where I'm, I'm really happy to see like, that is one thing having like the back step out of music and like doing this own weird niche thing. It's just like, Oh, I get to see everyone like, making their moves and like seeing what they're doing now and shit. So I've been really happy. That makes me really happy. And then I kind of just get to like do stuff that maybe will compliment, yeah. you know, something. That's why I always want to do music. I was like, yeah, hey, maybe I can be like a little support in the back and be like, Oh, you guys want some like really niche thing that 
or you want like a flyer or something for a tour or whatever mm-hmm. that's like kind of cool but it doesn't have to be like your it doesn't have to be a fucking the main one <laughs> but yeah, like yeah. i don't expect you to do that like <laughs> yeah shit like that just to be like have a little something there is cool so yeah point is i'm very <laughs> happy about every, <laughs> all the people that kind of were around the beginning i'm like very happy to see but they all 100 percent grinded through it yeah. i mean even like even like Knock Loose at the time, or even yeah. Kublai Khan, yeah. all those guys, like yeah. those were nonstop touring mm-hmm. bands. Yeah, like those dudes were on the shit forever, just like on the road or yep. whatever. It's just like so. I feel like that's the hardest thing about being good at something is sticking with it long enough to get good at it. Yeah, it's and that's, the time. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's given me a lot of hope of like, oh, when I'm bad at something, it's like. That's kind of part of it. <laughs> like, it just has to be bad enough at it for long enough yeah. to get good at it. Yeah. Even like when to back out of things too was also a lesson I learned. Like, even with like at that time, like it was a, it was a pretty bummer. You know, it was a big choice, but mm-hmm. like, uh, even I, it all kind of ends up working out anyways. Yeah. Because like, maybe in a different timeline, sure, but I'm happier doing my like my yes. little squares and just making people laugh and shit where like now the guys are. Yeah. They're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck crushing it. Tim's yeah. like singing and shit. And I'm like, I could have, his voice is single. so unbelievable. Dude, yeah. It's fucked up. <laughs> I couldn't sing a goddamn note close to him. Um, so yeah, I was like, yeah, it was like, no, this all worked out and it was supposed to be, I feel like it was supposed to be like this yes. where it's like, there's a reason now the time hit, and now this is all happening. It all lines up. So I'm just like, yes, fuck it. I'm at peace with everything. Everything's all good, dude. So yes, also yeah. great that you guys were able to like maintain the friendship through it all. Where like I don't know the inner workings of it all, but I know that bands become so so tight knit that it can be very hard to part ways with the band and not part ways with the friendships associated with it. Where the two become so intertwined. Yeah, uh, that it's great. That, yeah, there's still the Discord pulling you guys all together. You can still ask them for feedback about the video. Like it, it's great to keep the yeah keep the friends and even if the the business entity wasn't the best fit for you. That's like, who cares? That's kind of secondary yeah. to, to being happy and being fulfilled in your life. And it, yeah, I think for me, what I learned is that being on tour wasn't the perfect life for me. It just doesn't, wasn't quite satisfying and fulfilling and not that I spent six months on the road. But yeah, spent- you had to deal with us at one point too. So, <laughs> which I loved. I, uh, it was a great experience. I loved that experience, <laughs> but I also took away from it of like, this isn't what I want to do for my whole life. Like it, it was yeah. fun in small doses, but it was like, uh, you're you're no stranger to it. The idea of like coming home and like starting life up again mm-hmm. was always so disorienting to me. And it was like I don't want to build a life that detracts from the life that I think I am building. Like it seems like the two are always at odds. And like you yeah. can either be on tour and succeed and be happy and be in that like intimate circle who understand what's happening, but home never understands that, and vice versa. Where like you can't bring home on the road with you because if everyone brings their home life into the bus, <laughs> that thing's gonna be a disaster. There's gonna yeah. be so many people complaining about so like you kind of you have never, to just leave it. Yeah. You're never separated either. It's always yeah. like yeah, you know something just happened or everyone's you're about to leave and everyone's like emotionally charged. You got yeah. the significant one, so everyone's just like stay. Yes, <laughs> and you're like no, I gotta go. Yes, Sorry. and ultimately I just felt like that wasn't for me. I felt like it wasn't yeah. the way to make me the most happiest as I yeah saw it out yeah. over time. Uh, and yes. I'm sure I will still, to- I still am trapped. I'm still, yeah, still doing stuff. Yeah. But it's like, and you're still, you're still doing stuff. You're doing your videos and everything yes. too. And it's yeah. all fucking cool. And it was, so yeah, I guess just to like- put your point to go full circle is about, yeah, finding my role in this whole thing. Yeah. My role wasn't where I initially thought it was going to be when I picked up a camera, but like, that's cool. That's also part of learning and figuring out what the fuck, what, who I am. I think it's the other piece of this. Like, I assume you started boundaries or joined boundaries when you were 14, 15, 13. Like, dude, I don't even know when I okay. <laughs> was it that young. I have no idea. I'm, I'm assuming that it was before. It felt like that. Yeah. Um, but it, I get the, yeah. the full circle. Your point, yeah. Yeah. The point there is like, yeah. uh, I've heard a uh, comedian or Theo Vaughn specifically was talking about how like he started comedy at an age and then had just been doing it and never stopped to think about like why he's doing it. What's the point? What does he want to do instead? Would yeah. he rather be an actor? And I, I appreciated that sentiment of like, yeah, a choice we made at 16 to go do something doesn't mean we have to keep doing it until we're 30 yeah. now. Like it is very normal to be 25 and be like, I think. That was a good choice at 16 was, and not yeah. a good choice now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't know, that whole thing, like, even at the time, actually, I think you went on tour with us when I was, like, at Critical Mass. It was that, was the weekend, with, like, three days with Currents? Yeah. Oh, yeah. bro. I if you don't mind me telling you this. Please. Which is a weird thing to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was, I think there was one night where I was just, like, straight up, my 
I was like, what is my body doing? Like, I've played these songs before. What is going on? Like, I was critical mass. I remember one night we're joking about, like, feedback about stuff. I was thinking about what we were talking about it. But it was literally, like, one night you were you had the set recorded, and I was like, man, like, I don't know if fucking Peter got X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. In my head, I was not, I would not go around and be Pippa, but that's not me. But straight up, I was like, no, it's me. <laughs> it's straight up me. And that's the realization. I was like, you know what, man? Like, something mentally or physically combined is telling me maybe I'm not. Like, yeah. there's something going on. Maybe yeah. it's it's something telling me that uh, there's definitely I, something in the cards. A chain has to get, you know, made or something. So. Yeah. But it's very funny that, you know, it's all come full circle. Yeah. We're talking about how things, you know, kind of moved on or yeah. like we swapped up how we're, you know, feel back X, Y, and Z. So. Yeah. I, was, I thought it was funny thinking about. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny how it started in this moment. And, yeah. Circles back to this moment yeah, in the basement. And, yeah. Who knows what's We're going on in your head right now? That you'll come back in five We're more back. years. <laughs> Be like, Peter, when I was on your podcast, I realized. <laughs> Hopefully we get that far. Um, hell yes, my man. Um, we are coming up on our hour, which feels like it has flown by. I feel like a hundred more things we can talk about, Jesus. but I won't keep you forever because an hour feels like a good chunk of time here. Yeah. Uh, one thing I like to talk, talk, uh, talk with people about before they get out of here uh, is what are you currently learning? So this show, uh, it's called From Everyone, and it came from this idea of learning something from everyone. And I think one of the big things that I've learned from people is like I tend to look at people as like finished products. Like you're doing the pixel art. You're great. You're doing it. And it's like, that's just not how people are. I assume in the context of pixel art, there is some version of you going, I would love to learn how to do this. I would love to get my color theory better. I would love to blah, blah, fill in the blank. Yeah. What is something in the pixel art world that you are like specifically focusing on to try to improve right now? What is something that you are willing yourself to get better at, whether it's YouTube university or just the hard way of practice? Dude, well, in all honesty, starting pixel art, I am so bad at drawing. Okay. Categorically bad at drawing. Like <laughs> stick figure shit too like i never like when i was younger i would like i would draw uh, yeah, just, I yeah. just heresies on, <laughs> on paper it was awful um no but that's something like now that i'm picking up on i for some reason pixel art connected me with kind of like i'm learning the fundamentals and it's been year a yeah. couple of years of doing that so it's starting to like feel better mm -hmm. but like getting anatomy right stuff like that yeah even that's too silly shit like the nathan example where it's like <laughs> Nathan, can I get a life size picture? Yeah, we got the cheeks here, bro. I gotta get. Can you get a reference? Let me figure that out now. Like, but like learning, learning anatomy, making sure. It's How low does that thing hang? <laughs> Nathan's gonna see us and like, what the fuck were you talking about? Yo, shout out, this Nathan. The whole time, I love you, Nathan. Um, no, like getting anatomy right. Uh, it, it's something that popped up when I did the video. I'm like, does mm -hmm. someone move like that? Really, stuff like that. Um. Getting color, actually, you brought it, you're like right on it. You're fucking in my brain, Peter. <laughs> like, color theory, making sure that's correct. It's very critical of pixel art, too, because you're not dealing with like 40 Rain colors or yeah. X amount of hues. Yep. You're taking it and it's mathematically taking all 40 and putting it into one color. That's mm -hmm. like the median of it. Yep. So, choice, like, choice when it comes to colors is a thing that i'm yeah. still figuring it's out so finite and how many options you have to choose from. i assume you choose a palette so you have some like initial selection but yeah. then even within the palette yeah there's eight options or whatever the number is yeah and it's like yeah there's more than eight colors yeah and then it, just more animation <laughs> yep um i end up learning by doing but i'm starting to like hey let me make a little fun project for myself stuff like that mm -hmm. so animation color theory anatomy those are like yep. the things i'm really i've really been trying to like nail down because there's so many other good pixel artists out yeah. there it seems like a niche community but it's like a lot of things coming back pixel art is one of them where and there's just fucking like monsters out there of course, doing yeah. it there's too. an eight-year-old somewhere in france who is Dude, the best at it yeah there's one kid that is 15 <laughs> he started when he was 13 doing pixel art and is doing like in the context of it, um, if I were to, like, action figure-wise, most of mine are about that big. Mm -hmm. They're, like, tech deck little dudes, like mm -hmm. the little vinyl ones about that size. Yep. They are straight up making, like, this size, fully animated, yeah. full full armor, like, shining, like, grim dark, like, like, they set a tone, they got a theme, they got X, Y, and Z. It's, like, insane, and I'm over, like... I'm 30. Hi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so stuff like that. Uh, I always just like, I look up to those people. I'm like, how do I do better? Of course. How's their anatomy? Stuff like that. I so. think the anatomy is an interesting thing. To me, like color theory and animation makes sense. That yeah. if I'm learning pixel art, I would need color theory and I would need animation. 
anatomy is an interesting one because it's like, that's not a logical thing. And I'm always fascinated with my choice of like, when I said I wanted to make music videos, I didn't know I was gonna have to be an electrician. I didn't know I was gonna have to be able to calculate how much power is in a house and how I'm gonna blow a circuit, if I'm gonna blow a circuit. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna need to know how to build my own computer. Yeah. Where like, I, I thought I was gonna have a MacBook my whole life and then very quickly was like, oh, MacBooks aren't the cutting edge of what I need. <laughs> like I, yeah. I need a graphics card and I Let's can't put go. that in my MacBook. So <laughs> how do I build a computer now? Yeah. And like, there's so many like secondary and tertiary skills even that go into this thing. And yeah, the anatomy is a really interesting one of like, it doesn't, I never would have looked at what you're doing and be like, oh, he had to study anatomy. He had to look at anatomy. He had to figure out jumping references. And like, I'm sure you're not like, I'm sure you can't like diagnose an ACL tear, like not that level of Dude. anatomy, but like <laughs> the physics of jumping is like a, yeah, I've never begun to thought about that. That would be something that would keep you up at night. Yeah. There's like, uh, not, I mean, I don't think I'm ever going to post it, but there's literally a, I just finished a commission where it's like a not safe for work commission where it's someone just like their butt bouncing. <laughs> it's the first time ever I'm doing this. And I'm like, so I was I was sweating like the I am video because I'm like I gotta get this right. This is gonna be so silly <laughs> yeah. if it's like not hot, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so nothing yeah. works. Like the butt is just yes. doing X, Y, and Z. And that was the amount of times I would have to sit there and look at like reference videos of someone just even like going up on their toes and what the, your entire body does when mm -hmm. you do that. But then increase the velocity of it and get the like the physics right. Yeah, like. I was just like, I didn't think this is actually a challenge. Like, I was like, no, this is just funny. It's not a challenge, but it's an entire challenge. Yep. So it's like stuff like that. Yeah. That's where I'm like, oh, I need to learn like physics yes. and how muscles work with each other, yep. but also how to draw those muscles <laughs> and stuff like that. So yes. this is a lot of stuff to it that I just keep unraveling. But it's always, like I said, it's you, you're like on the goal of learning one thing. But then you find it branches off to 15 other things that you're learning. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with like music or being on the road or yep. filing your taxes when you're a business and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. It's just like you end up just picking up little side quests along the way. And I use a side quest shit. phrase all the yeah. time. Yeah. We're just side questing. Yeah. That's all. And it's it makes it fun for me. Like, I, I appreciate how many diverse skills of like. Yeah, I know you think I just point my camera at stuff, but actually, uh, I know all about Rembrandt's painting because we studied lighting based on how Rembrandt painted people. Yep. Like, I don't really know who Rembrandt is, but I know <laughs> what he Fuck painted. <laughs> <laughs> he was somewhat cool, and he taught us how to light people. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, all these like little niche aspects that become relevant as we start doing is always uh, fascinating. Yeah, anatomy is a perfect example there of like, um, you mentioned the not safe for work uh, art. Is that like a, I assume it's a huge area for pixel art, whereas I've gotten into like 3D <laughs> animation. Uh, the thing I keep running into is like, uh, I there's a music video that is not out yet, so I can't say too much about it. But what I can yeah. say is that we were looking to commission a scene, and the scene was like they wanted like romance, and it couldn't be like sex because it has to go on YouTube. But like they wanted intimacy that was as close to that. Yeah, and it was like, well, I'm not the guy to animate two people kind of fucking. But <laughs> turns out that there are plenty of people online who animate people <laughs> fucking all day because there's a ton of people want to consume that. This so as a result, it was very easy to find someone to do it, uh, not safe for work, like PG-13 iteration of it. Is that a similar thing in pixel art where like it seems like that would be a, a huge money-making aspect that then gets into this morality of like, well, do I really want to be making that all day or do I want to just stick with video game characters? Like, yeah. Dude, there's like, uh, honestly though, there's, so there are a couple like pixel artists that are dedicated to it. <laughs> I don't think I would ever go like the full route of like. <laughs> Which is so funny. Dick to balls. draw boobs all day is the funniest Dude, job in the whole world. Hilarious. But it's like, all right, draw <laughs> boobs, but like four squares. Put <laughs> four squares and then animate it so it look like boobs. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Yeah. Like I've never, like this is like more of like, just like a twerk yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I knew there was a, like there's, I'm going to sound like I'm a preacher or some shit, but sure. there was like definitely a lesson in it where yeah. I'm like, Oh, I have to learn how like where before I did not learn. Like I didn't have to worry about how legs worked muscularly wise, but mm -hmm. like, Oh shit, I'm over here. Like trying to fit like in an anatomy, like discovery book, like I used to get up from like the book fair. Yep. Like, all right, how does like the glute work Where does the with hamstring this. and the glute connect? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I would, I, there's sometimes I have to like stand up and like, this is literally someone twerking. I'm just like, okay. So like if I pick my <laughs> toes yeah, yeah, yeah. up, I'm like, oh my, what are you doing, dude? Um, it's like those mocap studios, like yes. stuff like that. Where I'm like, okay, I'm yeah. just getting it for the reference, but yeah. it's all like a learning through that. But to the money side of it, I, this is my first foray. You can you can fucking blame 
some of the boundaries guys for it because i would show up at shows out it's like they come back from like a tour they do a hometown show like all right man so uh i did this and i did this for commission he's like yeah when we when we when you get into like we get that not safe for work stuff Mm -hmm. (laughs) like it's a total bit because everyone knows i get like like, not squeamish with it but i'm like no i don't want to like i don't know if i put that out there but i realized it's just like you know dude it's like it's fun, like uh, <laughs> them all like have their bit with me. Like, dude. When when you get into the not safe for work space, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shut the fuck up, guys. <laughs> so I finally did it. I was like, it's my bag to opus, boys. I did it, but yes, um, I, there, there it's like a straight up. There's there's a ton of people that do not safe for work. Hats off to them. <laughs> like honestly, like it, that whole space. I mean, like. There's sex work too, and that's totally fine. So like people making art for it, so like, doing the thing and making art for the thing are totally different to me. Yeah, We're doing the thing is like cool. Do you boo? Making art for it is just the funniest thing in the whole. It's world hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, that's the boundary, guys. All they want is a, it, they're like it's a bit. So I was just like, yeah, fuck it, I'll I'll do it. Like it's fine. But like yeah, the commission happened. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. And the person yeah. who got it like loved it too. It's like their own OC, so. It's not just like it, we joke about it all the time, but it's not just something that's like, you know, find us. It's like their OC they thought of mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. So like there's there is some heart to it, even if it's like, you yeah. know, it's, uh, we giggle sure. about like X, Y, and Z, yeah, but it's yeah, their yeah. character's body and everything. So you got to respect it. So. <laughs> sure. No, but yeah, it's fun as fuck. That was oh, one yes. of my one of the funnest commissions I've ever done. I just did it. So. Hell yes. Uh, any commissions you would hope people will reach out to you more for? So anything you like, is there anything niche that you've done one or two of aside from the jiggling butt? Is there anything else that stands <laughs> out? It's like, I only got to do it once, but I would love if someone let me do that thing again. Um, I would say it, more music videos. I know there's so, there's so much work um, that puts yeah. into them, but that is like day one. Like, it would be so cool if I saw someone do a fucking music video and it's just like the characters or the bandmates doing X, Y, and Z running through and doing whatever. I thought that was really neat. Um, and that's like, that's my go to. Even more like, even shorts of mm-hmm. more games, maybe bands are using it for promotion. Uh, there's some stuff that's been thrown out there. Uh, Citizen just did that. I did a thing with Matt, their vocalist, where oh, yes. Matt's like a really fucking good, like, coder, like, okay, programmer, I guess Computer the word for nerd. it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Matt. In like the span of like a year and change, I did it. He's like, "Hey, you want to make some art for this little game I'm doing?" We like he does a thing called Sizz Fighter. Okay. And whenever like on the off chance they when they they put out a record, he'll like, you know what? I got time. Like, let me put a game out for it, or let me put a trailer out, like a mock up of it. But this time he's like, "Yeah, I'm doing the full game. You want to do the art for it?" So that's one thing. Like I got to collab with. Oh yes. Um, and it's all like the members. I did some of the background art, and they had another one of the other pixel artist guys. Um. Oh my gosh! I'll, I'll send you the link to my to, to him there. But he's awesome, talented. Uh, he did like all the models and animations for that too. So I just want to do more stuff like that. That way I can some support a band at some capacity. Kind of merge the two. Mm-hmm. That's my big thing. But. I think that's yeah. I again I come back to this idea of like it's such a great way to like. I think music and video games are our music specifically and video games seem to go hand in hand. Like it seems like by liking metal, you like Elden Ring and I don't know exactly why those two are so connected, but it seems like, yeah, there's a huge overlap. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's good, um, yeah. but it does seem like the, yeah, there's a, uh, I don't know, a, a hack of tastes to be had there of like, yeah, for sure. Whoever likes Lauren Shore probably likes video games. And if they can just lean into that a little bit and take some, yeah, whether it's a merch design, whether it's a music video, whether it's some animation in the bit in the yeah. middle, it seems, yeah, like a, a smart thing to overlap and look into. Like I said, it's with that, with D making, I like taking any like video or a new game that's got like Unreal Engine 5 with yes. 1 billion lumens and, <laughs> and polygons and then taking it and crushing it down to nothing. There's something yeah. like, fun about that to me yeah maintaining so, the essence of it without all the fluff yeah that goes into take, it. taking yeah. the pretty much like the essence of it or like taking band members and like putting them into like pixel art format like everyone imagines like what if i was in a video game and shit mm-hmm. like that so it's like i i think we feed on that a little bit where it's just I like tesseract so is cool doing that are they i we get a game i am I, there's a 1% chance I'm completely wrong here and that it's a different band or that it's something that I saw at Tease, but I'm like 99% sure that Tesseract, their base is someone in their band is like an Unreal Engine whiz and is getting into like making their own game and is doing it like as a theme, connecting all the band's albums together, like different stages. So it's like you're playing through the albums and like a really like 
I've, I swear I've seen clips of it. It's like a really like high level production that I don't think is finalized and out yet, but it's been like, it's mind numbing to me. It's a brilliant thing. And it's like a, not every band has the guy in it that can do this, but I'm so eager to see where it goes. Cause it seems like such a, just a niche, cool way to give back to fans. And I feel like the Tesseract fan base is such a, a tight knit community where there's like a specific thing that I feel like you either have never heard of them or love them more than life itself. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah, I'm so interested to see where that goes. Uh, and I totally forgot about it until this moment. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Life goes on. Uh, my last question for you, my man. Uh, we talked a lot about music, a lot about pixel stuff, a lot about all the cool stuff. Uh, what else are you into? Any other hobbies? Or yeah, big coffee guy, a big video game guy. Yeah. What is what is your current fix? What are you big getting into coffee most? guy, uh, big magic guy. Magic. Half of my stuff I do is like magic, the okay. gathering yeah, cards. Yeah. Yep. I got bullied into it by my friend Lucian, who's also my glorious right hand man when it comes to conventions. And Beautiful. Stuff. Love him to death. Um, but end of turn, it's something like I was like, I'm not going to play Magic. I know how much you guys spend money on this, and I was like, eh, fuck it, I'm on my sixth deck or like <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. I love doing that because it's just time I get to spend my friends. Of course. So, um, are you mostly with friends? Or are you like competing in tournaments at all? No. Like, okay, okay. Oh god, they're still like Kevin. You can't fucking do that in Magic. Like every night, it's gotcha. just like. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to do the spell. <laughs> it was going to be so cool. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. I had it in my head. It didn't work out. It just, can we run it back? Um, gotcha. Shit like that. Uh, gaming is my like my heart the all the time. Yep. Love video games. What's love the, playing them. What's friends. the one you got to fix on right now? What's the one you're going to go home and play tonight? <sighs> well, WoW's coming back with another expansion. Uh, another I know WoW it's going to be blas- blasphemy to some of my friends, but they got another expansion. <laughs> So, we're, like, a bunch of friends are jumping back into that. Hell yes. I was uh-huh. a RuneScape kid, so I, I missed the hype, but I totally understand it. It's just, yeah, a different language. Fucking Corey. Yeah, it's a very... <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. I've heard the great fight. <laughs> He's the guy I talked to about RuneScape. I think Moke's like that, too. Dude, he's been Hell playing yeah. OS RuneScape. Um, but, yeah, he uh, yeah, like, just... Um, not re- I never really got back into RuneScape. That was the thing. Like, I was watching, appreciate it. It's MMO. Like, yeah, it's like, not Rocket Science. Yeah, yeah, could not do it, dude. <laughs> Uh, at least to the extent of some of my friends, but um, there's World of Warcraft, obviously the expansion. Uh, there is I I will my friends do like tabletop gaming and stuff. I'll be in that space. I won't play it, but it's cool like watching them mm-hmm. and seeing like um, hopefully getting back into like D and D. Love that shit. Hell love yes. I love DMing. I did like one session with the guys, but it ended up being like. Well, we're going on tour in this time, or this one's out doing yeah. this, or we're doing yeah. blah blah blah. So it's we're it's like the schedule is the like the number one final boss of <laughs> doing D and D. So sure. we'll get back to that at that point. But yeah, it's a lot of bunch of little hobbies and stuff I've somehow accumulated, even though I didn't think I was gonna have them. So sure. it all works out here. So hell yeah, busy. Sm- Hell yes, dude. We did it. Episode 76 with Kevin Stevens. We did it. Uh, Kevin, where can people find you online? Where can they follow you? Where can they hire you for more commissions for pixel art, video game creation, graphic design, any cool cool yeah. shit that you want made? I, uh, you want to go on Instagram.com uh, slash pixelkeeper underscore KS. Hell yes. Uh, if you want to take a look at any of the prints I do, um, that they're all on my Etsy. You can just look up Pixel Keeper um, on Etsy. That should bring you right to me. Hell yes. Um, yeah, those are kind of like the two main places. I, I, you know, I have Twitter and stuff like that. But yeah, Instagram.com slash pixelkeeper underscore KS. Hell yes. That'll all be linked below. Um, my man, I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you making time to chat with me and yeah, learn me about all the cool things you've been working on so far. Thanks, I'm happy uh, to catch up with you, man. Hell yes, dude. It's been a treat. Episode 76 of From Everyone with Kevin Stevens. We did it. Nice.